all the announcements that I have. At this time, I invite you to rise as we sing together our opening hymns. It's going to be out of the Gray Praise and Worship hymnal. Rise as we begin by singing Gray number 14. sung by the same composer with uh, hymn number 30 in the same grave book. confession and forgiveness is printed on the front of your bulletin and we do gather to worship this morning in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit amen 
God's light and love make clear what has been cloudy in our lives. Let us confess our sins before God and one another, clearing the path in our lives so we can faithfully follow God. Gracious God, you told Moses that you are the great I am. You call us to attend to the cries of injustice, and yet we close our eyes to the pain of others and take care of our own instead. You ask us to turn aside from prejudice, and yet we stand fearful of others who are not like us. You call us to help others in need, and yet often and we stammer our excuses. Forgive us for a weak response to the needs around us. Let your call for us to do justice burn in us. Hear this good news. There is always opportunity to walk in the ways of justice each day. Christ says to us, you are forgiven. You are called to live as beloved children of God. You are loved. You are worthy. Thanks be to God. Amen. And then please join me as we pray together the prayer of the day. Holy God, you called Moses to rescue people in our troubled world. Teach us to notice you calling us so we can be your hands, feet, and voice in our troubled world. Amen. Please be seated and at this time the kids are invited to Stand up and come with Mariah, who is the Sunday school teacher today. So she's there to lead them out to Sunday school. See, I knew it. We're late again for church. You know I can't stand being late to church. Well, I'm sorry, Roger, but I ran out of hairspray. I had to figure something out for my hair. Your hair looks just fine, Bernice. Really? Really? Do you like it? I use spray starch. <laughs> spray starch on your hair? Does it work? Well, we'll find out if it holds up until Gene plays the last hymn today. Ah, look at that. We'll never find a place to sit. Hey, hey, hey! Oh, oh look, look, your mother saved some seats uh, for us. Let's go up there, dear. Come on. Okay, scooch in. Sneak in there. Scooch in, scooch in. Sit, sit down there by Grandma. Excuse me. Oh, excuse us, excuse us. Oh, was that your toe? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, 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 good. Good, good, good. Hi, Grandma. Oh, you guys, you're late again. Um, what did I miss so far, Mom? You missed the prelude. Oh, Jean had a good prelude this morning. And then you missed some announcements. The pastor was rambling again. You know, oh, yeah. yeah. Women, you know, they're that they way. That. I ignored the announcements, and I used my time to look around to see who's here today. I always like to see what they're wearing. Dottie, look at Penny. I think she wore that same outfit last week. One of my, and then you missed the opening hymn, one of my favorite songs this morning. Oh, well, I just hope that the preacher is preaching on something that little Dottie will enjoy. Oh, well, this will tell us what's going on to be in church today, the focus this morning. Oh, no. Oh, oh. Roger, what's wrong? Are you having another sinus attack? Do you need me to suction out your nostrils again? Uh, no, no, no. This is much worse than a sinus attack. 
you know what they're going to talk about today? What? Stewardship. <gasps> oh, no. You're kidding me. Really? Oh. What is wrong now? Well, it says here in the bulletin that the church council leadership, they're going to get up and talk in church today about stewardship. <gasps> the S word. Oh, you know, giving of your time and talent and money, all that stuff. Oh yeah, this church always seems to want something from me. I should have known. Money. It's the topic at church every year at this time. Mm -hmm. Every autumn it's out there. Like the flu. Shh. Daddy, you're talking loud again. People are staring. We have to get out of here. Let's escape and make a break for it before they get up and start talking about money. Well, thanks to your mother, we're stuck here in the middle of a road. Row and escaping won't be easy. Listen, we have to get out of here. Well, we can't just get up and walk out in the middle of a worship service without an excuse. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, right. I've got it. Uh, oh, daddy, daddy. Are you feeling okay? Yes, I feel great. <laughs> Are you sure? You look a little sickly. I feel fine. Oh, well just, oh, you do feel a little feverish, dear. We just have to take you home. I told you, I feel fine. Well, Daddy, I need you to not feel fine today, right now. That would be a lie, and I'm not going to lie in church. Oh, sheesh. If we can't get her to... We keep, 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 keep taking her to Sunday school, and... Yeah, what's happening to her? She won't even be, obey her parents. Well, we'd better think of something else. The church council member, he's going to be coming up here pretty soon. I can just feel it. I got it. If we can get down to that end of the aisle... There, we can, we can make an easy getaway. Just follow my lead, okay? Okay, okay, okay. <clears throat> Would you mind switching seats with me? I can't stand, stand the smell of her hairspray. It's, it's starch, spray starch. Gives me hives. Yeah, yeah, let, let's switch. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> That's my wife. <clears throat> I'm sorry, is, is there anything wrong? Yes, thank you for asking. We're trying to get out of here before the church council member gets up to speak. You know what they're going to talk about today, don't you? We know what they're going to discuss today. The council is going to talk about stewardship yeah. and money. Yeah. yeah you're You're really it. looking forward to hearing what they have to say today. Well, but you know what the bottom line is, don't you? They're going to want to talk about how you can give your money and your time and your talents and all of that to church. We're just so glad to have Good Shepherd here for our family. I know that I have to give regular gifts of money to our church. So the church is here with a skilled staff and the lights are on, so it's always here to help me and help others in our community, too. Now that we are members, we know that it's up to us to give regularly. Not just when we make it to worship. God counts on us. But the church counts on us giving regularly, too. And we aren't afraid to discuss those controversial issues. Too many people are afraid to talk about money in church. But did you know... Jesus talked about money dozens of times when he was preaching. Yes, yes. You know, my husband and I haven't been members of Good Shepherd very long. It wasn't too long ago that we used to spend all our money and time on ourselves. But now we really want to learn about what God wants and what others might need. We realize that our giving is a way to invest in other people in our community. I'm just amazed at how good I feel to give to the church and know that I'm helping others. Yes, I'm glad to support a church that can provide a big funeral like we had last month for Jason Nebor. 
I'm glad to see our money being used that way. It's one thing to come to worship, but I want a deeper relationship with God and this church. I think I can only do that when I realize that everything we have belongs to God. I want to use what I have in a more faithful way. Faithful living and faithful giving. <clears throat> yes, and I know what you and your family have been up to here this morning playing your musical chairs game, you've been trying to sit next to us newcomers so that you can be a good example for us. You want to be mentors for us, don't you? Gee, honey, we're so lucky to have such a wonderful family step forward to teach us how to have a deeper relationship with God and to be faithful givers to Good Shepherd. Oh, well, <laughs> we're just so glad that we can be an inspiration to you. <clears throat> um, um, we were just trying to contribute to your spiritual growth. Thank you know, thanks. thank you. I'm glad that we could learn a little more, bit more about our faith and our money and how they're intertwined. I'm a loyal Viking and Twins fan. <laughs> As you can tell by my clothing apparel today in church, and thank you. Um, if I could spend money on Viking tickets and Twins tickets, I surely, surely can bring my offering to church each and every week to help the church operate. I've learned that regular giving is an important part of opening up my heart and learning to trust in God. Um, Mom, Dad, I'm not feeling very well. No, no Daddy, no, no. We're going to stay now. But my stomach hurts. Mom sprayed our chairs, making me feel sick. Well, Daddy, we need to stay and listen to what the church leadership has to say about money and faith. This is not just about Dad's checkbook, but this is about our life of faith. <clears throat> Just move away from your mom. Turn your head away from her spray start there. You, you'll be fine. No, 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 no. Put your head down between your knees. <laughs> then, then you'll feel better in no time. You know, I'm kind of looking forward to hearing what the council leadership has to say today. We should be concerned about the health of this church. We want to make sure the church is always here for our family. Well, can you imagine? People who are trying to avoid listening to how faith and money are all connected. Oh, I'm glad we stuck around. There's a lot about stewardship that we don't understand. Well, you know, Roger, I think we would serve as good mentors to this new family. You've always been such a good role model. <laughs> what do you think, Bob? Uh, uh, yeah, um, as I was sitting here meditating, um, <laughs> I know, Roger, that the church council is always looking for new members to be on the stewardship committee. Maybe you would be interested in being on the uh, yeah, stewardship committee. I could be on that committee. Maybe I could even be the chairperson. Yeah. Let's hear what the church council has to tell us. Bring it on. Bring it on, Mr. Hansen. You can sit up now, Daddy. Are you feeling better? No. No? no? Get away from that hair. Get away from that hair. <laughs> wow. What an introduction, huh? Good morning. Good morning, Good morning Mr. Hansen. <laughs> As, uh, We're eager to hear from you. Good. As they pointed out, I'm here today representing the church council. And... Many people think that it's dangerous or even wrong to, uh, for the church to bring up money. But I'm here today as the council vice president wanting us to be thinking about that, money. Maybe it would surprise you to know that the Bible mentions money more than 2,000 times. Our money and our faith are truly connected. The most important thing I want to say today is thank you. If you have been giving regularly to Good Shepherd, thank you. If you are giving what you pledged, thank you. On behalf of the Good Shepherd Church Council, 
I want you to, to let you know that we appreciate your faithful giving. I'm going to jog your memory a little bit. Remember uh, last winter in February, we had to cancel service twice, and the offering basket was pretty empty. Giving fell way behind, and we never caught up. We had to transfer a total of $36,500 from our operational savings to stay current with our bills. All our bills are paid and up to date. We are calling this time catch-up time at Good Shepherd, hoping that in the next few weeks we can catch up on giving. If you have been able to catch up on your pledge, thank you. If you are able to help us build our savings account back up, thank you. God has been very generous with his love for us. God calls us to live generous lives as well. Your faithful giving makes a difference here at Good Shepherd and beyond. Confirmation, Sunday school, Wednesday school, weddings, funerals, quilting, Bible studies, youth events, all that and more are some of the ways God is active here at Good Shepherd. A month from now, you'll be asked to pledge your 2020 support for God's work through Good Shepherd. Please pray and respond to God's call, trusting that God will do amazing things through us. Your generosity changes lives. Thank you for your faithful witness to God's blessing in your life.
The psalm is Psalm 138, read responsively. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I sing your praise. I bow down towards your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he perceives from far away. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you perceive you preserve me against the wrath of my enemies. You stretch out your hand, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Here ends the psalm reading. Before today's reading, I'd like you to think about how faithful and loving God has been throughout history. From the beginning, how God creates and rescues and frees and blesses us. A reading from the book of Exodus. Now a new king arose over Egypt who did not know Joseph. He said to his people, Look, the Israelite people are more numerous and more powerful than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, or they will increase, and in the event of war, join our enemies and fight against us and escape from the land. The Egyptians became ruthless in imposing tasks on the Israelites and made their lives bitter with hard service in mortar and brick and in every kind of field labor. They were ruthless in all the tests they imposed on them. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burning up, burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then he said, come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings. And I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey. The cry of the Israelites has come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you. And this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. 
He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my title for all generations. Word of God, word of life. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, grace and peace to you from God, our creator, from our rescuer, our blesser and savior. Amen. From the beginning, God has been there to create us, to form us, and breathe life into us. God called us and claimed us, wanting a personal relationship with us. God named each one of us as a child of God and provided for our every need. God gave us the earth to take care of and all its inhabitants, to share the earth in all its goodness and creation, to share with all creation. But what happened? We forgot about God's faithfulness. We thought we could be our own gods. We didn't need God, our creator, rescuer, protector, the one who promised to love us forever and ever unconditionally until things went bad. Think of what happened in the garden. And then remember the flood and Noah's ark? And then with Abraham and Sarah, do you remember what God promised? I will make you a great nation, as numerous as the stars in the sky. I will bless you. I will give you the land flowing with milk and honey. I will bless you to be a blessing. And now, then with Isaac and with Jacob and now with Moses, 400 years had passed and God continued to be loving and faithful. But the people forgot. They forgot that we have a God who creates and rescues and forgives and frees and loves. They forgot until things went bad. The Israelites, God's chosen people, were oppressed and treated like slaves. They were beaten in Egypt because it was a new pharaoh and he was afraid that they might take over and he'd lose his power. They cried to God for help and that's when God sent them an unlikely hero to carry out God's promises to love and rescue, to free and to bless. Moses, you remember him from Sunday school, I think? He was a new pharaoh. He was afraid, so he was going to have all the firstborn children killed. But you may not remember Sophira and Pua, the midwives who helped the women have, take, have birth. So they followed God and not Pharaoh. And Pharaoh was very angry because all these Hebrew children were being raised up in his kingdom. And so Sophira and Pua said, Ooh, those Hebrew women are strong women. They give birth on their own. So plan B, Pharaoh said, throw all the firstborn Hebrew children in the Nile River. Ah, remember where Moses was? They put him in the Nile River, but they put him in a basket. The same word used for basket is the word that's used for ark. Moses received the name Moses because it's called drawn out. Ah, you see a pattern here? The flood waters, the ark, people were rescued and saved, drawn out from drowning. 
Moses was saved and rescued to be a spokesperson. Moses was a man of justice because Pharaoh's daughter found him and he was raised in the temple, raised in Pharaoh's court. But he couldn't stand what he was seeing the Egyptians doing to the Hebrew people, to the Israelites. And so he killed a man and he had to flee. And then he became a shepherd in Midian. And that's where we pick up the story again. In those 400 years, maybe we didn't hear much about Moses, but about God. But God had continued to be faithful, to be loving, caring, rescuing, freeing, and blessing. This unlikely hero now stands before God, a renegade, a murderer, a fugitive, a shepherd boy. God chooses us. God chooses unlikely heroes like us to go and tell the good news of God's love. And so Pharaoh went, I mean, excuse me, Moses went back to Egypt. And what did he say to Pharaoh? Remember that? Let my people go. And then Pharaoh we went through the plagues. You remember that? I'm not going to recount that. But the last plague, your firstborn sons will die. So Pharaoh let them go, but they went through the Red Sea and they were rescued. Do you see a pattern here in the water that God continues to rescue us? to love us and to care for us. Think about it. God continues to be with us, but we forget. How many of you have heard your parents say, how many times do I have to tell you? My parents would also add, Margaret Ann, do we need to continue to beat our head against the wall? I don't know if God is rolling his eyes and shaking his head. I can just hear the sighs. Margaret Ann, what are we going to do with you? What are we going to do with all of you, my children? Remember, I love you. I'm always with you. I will provide for you. I care about you. I will go with you always and everywhere. But just like Moses, we have excuses. Oh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. Get somebody else. We forget who God is and God's promises to us. God reveals to Moses his name. I am who I am. He creates that intimate relationship and letting Moses and us know that he will always be there for us and with us wherever we go. I am who I am. Maybe it's kind of like, that's for me to know and you to find out. Not in a snotty way, but for us each day we have the opportunity to learn more about God and our relationship with God as we come to God in prayer and praise and thanksgiving. Think of the times you're with God in worship and prayer. The times when you let God in and what joy you experience in God's presence. But then we forget. I think of the class reunions and the times we get together with old friends. We have so much fun. And I hear many people say, including myself, let's not wait so long to get together again. We've got to do this more often. The summer goes by, time goes by, we get so busy, we forget. Let's not forget the goodness and grace of God who calls us and claims us and says, Child of God, you are mine. Don't be a stranger. God says, know that I love you and I go with you always and everywhere. Go, 
be a blessing to others. Go, let my people know how much I love them. There's no excuse. Let's not forget God's everlasting promises. Call upon God day, every day in prayer and praise and thanksgiving. Child of God, you are loved and forgiven and blessed. Blessed to be a blessing. It is my hope and prayer that you will answer God's call. Here I am, Lord. I will go, Lord. I will love and serve you. And I will hold your people in my heart. And to that good news, we can all say amen. amen. Let us sing together, Here I Am, Lord, in the Red Book 574. to join me now on page 105 at the front part of your hymnal and rise as together we confess our common faith and belief 
using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Take a moment now to share the peace with one another. Tomorrow morning, the crafty quilters will gather to piece together and sew quilts. They meet on many Monday mornings to make quilts that get donated to nearby shelters and far away to help people following disasters. The quilting group is just another example of the way Good Shepherd brings people together to make a difference in our community and the world. The generous gifts of your time and talent and treasures touches many people and for that, we say thank you.
Our offertory hymn is in the gray hymnal. Please rise as we sing number 200. God, open our hearts in compassion and hear these prayers as they raise, as we lift them up to you. God, we give you thanks for calling your prophet Moses to be your hands and your feet and to speak to your people, those who were hurting. Remind us always, God, that you bring your love to us in surprising ways. Remind us that you call us all to help other people. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for a hurting planet. We know, God, that you called us to care for creation. May we be faithful stewards of our fragile earth so future generations may know the blessings of this land. Lord, in your mercy, we lift up and pray for our leaders, Lord God, that they may show true wisdom, kindness, and care for all people. Lord, in your mercy,
gracious God, we give thanks for our loved ones who bravely serve in the military. We lift up in prayer all our loved ones who serve in the military, but we pray this day for Cameron Litke, who is in basic training in San Diego. Keep Cameron and all who serve safe in your care. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, may your peace surround all who are in need today. Shower your blessings upon those who grieve, those who are sick, those who are suffering. May the quiet peace of God's love surround those who feel hopeless. We pray for those who are in recovery. Today we lift up in prayer our loved ones whom we name now. We pray for baby Henry, who's the great-grandson of Harvey and Emily Malachowski, as he is hospitalized. We pray for Susan V's father, Everett. We pray as well for Carla Stern, Doug Schroeder, Bebo Getchell. We pray, God, that you would be with those and all others that we name silently in our hearts. Bless them with healing, comfort, and strength. Lord, in your mercy, into your gracious hands, God, we lift up all for whom we pray, trusting in your love and your power. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Our sending song is hymn number 720 in the red hymnal. We are called.
Coffee Fellowship is being served downstairs just below us. Goodies and some coffee and juice are being served. So you're all welcome to that. And we end by saying, just a second, Haley's going to say it. She says, nope, now I don't want to. Yep, she didn't get to prepare. <laughs> Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.